um thank you so much himangni for taking time out and joining us for this um series of discussions that we're doing on competition strategy and policy uh specifically for india and the purpose is just to identify the challenges that um digital businesses and digital markets are giving rise to from a competition perspective and what india needs to do differently to address these challenges so um i think a good place to start would be by understanding how you view the problems that currently exist in digital markets from a competition perspective and which problems you think are particularly relevant in an indian context no thanks mohit happy to chat um but maybe can i um ask before i respond to this question uh, is what are the problems that that you think exist in the digital markets that need to be addressed um so literature addresses a couple of problems that they feel uh, digital businesses are of course unique in terms of network effects feedback loops etc cetera, etc cetera. and because of their characteristics these characteristics there are certain tipping effects which make them more prone to say monopolization abuse of dominance uh there are also issues regarding predatory pricing and the role that non price factors have to play in these assessments so whether privacy and other factors should be considered in antitrust um decision so i think broadly these are some of the issues that competition authorities around the world are grappling with right now and i'd be interested to know if you feel these com- concerns actually exist or or whether it's fairly similar to traditional industries in some sense got it so i i, I feel like so there i don't think their digital markets can be entirely equated with the physical markets but i think that the principles do apply and to as a as a starting point i think today in the times that we live in is is actually the best time for digital market growth um i think india has uh, you know is committed to the net neutrality policy which effectively means that small businesses always have access to uh, the same uh, the basic resource that you need for a digital market which is uh, you know getting online and the, the and and the and the resource and the limited resource that you need for uh, a small business to make it big uh, is evidence in the kind of number of u- sort of e-commerce unicorns that india is churning out on a on a regular basis i think there is uh sufficient there's a lot of competition in this market uh yes the nature of digital markets is that a number of these services are platform markets which means that there will be network effects there will be two sided uh two sided network effects on in most of these cases um and that is the nature of the market but in order for it to uh, but but if you're asking me whether that nature in and of itself is something that raises a concern i think there i'd need to disagree a little bit um i think there are i think we're still trying to understand how these markets work i think that is the biggest challenge um and i think the 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 a lot of the concern a lot of the noise that is surrounding the digital market economy has more to do with the concerns that you mentioned over here which is your privacy uh you know the kind of information that is out there data collection and i'm not quite sure and this is the sort of debate that is out there which is the raging debate is whether competition really should be the tool to address these concerns um i certainly you know i i i think that like you mentioned non price factors would necessarily play a role in determining whether or not there is anti competitive behavior out there but whether privacy in and of itself should be uh you know a uh, uh, con- considered a, a violation or or in itself an anti competitive kind of conduct i don't think that that would be sort of the right view to take certainly not under the the scheme of of our act uh it's wide enough to consider behavior but i don't think i think we need to be a little more calibrated about before rushing into you know ex ante regulation or immediately starting to say that this is bad without addressing all of the non price factors so non price factors according to me means privacy is certainly one of them but there is equally you know what are the benefits that the users are getting quality of the product that is getting time time that the users take to get where they need to be ease of business that comes online as a result of this the kind of dissemination that is otherwise happening the, the, the all of these factors need to be looked at holistically before you know we can jump to any conclusions and i think the most important thing before we do any of this is to you know know as much understand the business understand how tech works before trying to regulate it with superficial knowledge 
Right. That that's a very interesting couple of points that you raised. And just as a follow up, so would you suggest that? I mean, broadly, if you look at it on a global level, it seems to be more and more authorities are adopting an interventionist approach, where they're more keen on introducing ex ante measures or intervening on the factors that we've just discussed. So, given India's demography, given its current economic status, do you feel a differentiated approach would make sense here? One that is more calibrated. And broadly, how would you sort of feel the core? elements or structure of this approach can be created um i know i agree that there is definitely uh, there is a global inclination to be a lot more interventionist uh, about these digital markets again i think you know when i when i when i saw the sort of the 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 committee that was created in the us senate when you know sort of the big four were um questioned i found very little had to do with the theories of harm under competition law and again a lot of the questions were centered around why are you taking so much data why what is your privacy policy why is it that you can track my data and the answer to that really is that there are options today which allow you to switch off or switch on i think that is a good development that has happened i think there is user choice there needs to be more knowledge about how you would like to control your data and if that choice is available to you then i think a lot of those concerns sort of go away for example i can speak personally that i prefer targeted ads than having to see ads that have absolutely no relevance to me if i have to see those ads and necessarily i don't think anyone is disputing that ads is a legitimate sort of business revenue monetization model that a lot of businesses follow so Uh, uh, again i think uh, again and i think one fact to to clarify here is that we don't really have a yes i know the ec has come out with uh, a decision uh, you know a couple of decisions over here uh, some of the other ec um, you know national competition authorities have also uh, made a couple of decisions there have equally been some decisions that have sort of dismissed a lot of the complaints which would you know otherwise that tend to come up uh, you know with respect to dominant electronic uh, or digital media or digital uh, entities um but i think nothing has been litigated all the way the way we have a final decision on any of this i think jurisprudence on this is developing i think there is a lot of anxiety given the size of a lot of these companies and the kind of data they control and the kind of products that um are Uh, out there today as a result of it and i think there i think there's a lot of anxiety to see how what we can do to sort of rein them in a which stems from i think a, a lack of really understanding how this works um i think there is uh, while there are i think there's enough choice out there so even if you look at a say a search browser you know you open you know go to any search browser you can choose whichever one you want um there are options that are there the question is why is it that users still prefer to go only to one browser where is the empirical data over there that says that this is on account of choices that have been thrust upon a user as opposed to a user knowing that they have options and choosing nevertheless to go with the one and i think that's the kind of testing that we need to do because at the last time i read the law big in itself wasn't bad right uh, so another point that you touched on is that the jurisprudence on this is something that is still developing and we we really don't haven't fully under, understood yet how these businesses operate at least from a competition perspective so in the indian context uh, having a bit since you're a practitioner and you're regularly in in touch with academicians and other people who are writing about this what do you feel we need to do from uh, to build up a base of say literature or just other sort of information that can help not only improve determinations by the competition commission but also just the understanding of what the challenges are in a uniquely indian context yeah i'm so glad you talked about the indian context because unlike and and this is just a preface to to you know my responses to your other two questions which is that i don't i think we shouldn't also you know sort of blindly follow the model that is being followed in the us or the eu in form of an interventionist approach because we're still growing and a lot of uh, we need to see the context in which all of this would apply here um the two things that i think we definitely need to come up with quality uh, adjudication on these issues because let's face it today if we come out with certain remedies that affects the the landscape of digital development today because you would have 
found something to be a practice to be anti competitive and until and unless that is not empirically tested that yes this indeed was conduct that precluded competition from rising you are effectively altering the competitive landscape and you don't know whether the we don't know what the counterfactual to that is um and so we should we shouldn't do any of this in a hurry to get there i think what we absolutely need is for the regulators the academicians the uh, the practitioners to to be we may not be as well versed as the the technical operating guys that create these products but we should certainly have a significantly high working knowledge of how these products work so today when we say that it is not technically feasible to say that one product can be made interoperable with another let's understand what that means don't assume that you should make it interoperable simply because if i were to do that it would really hamper user experience and that is not the purpose of getting better technology out there to users and equally on the other side to test whether or not if someone is saying this can't be done whether it really can't be done so i think you need to understand it when when there are investigations get actual experts to 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 understand how this works to see whether you know the rationales that have been given actually make sense instead of either dismissing it outright or or not um you know i think an informed decision is always better than an uninformed one and i think that's just a universal principle um gone are the you know this is not the glass industry the cement industry the soda ash industry or any other you know regular uh, industry where i think we have 100 odd years of antitrust experience even if not in india generally where these principles we knew that there was a certain theory of harm that could be applied presumptively because we have tested it out over our you know hundreds of years and we know that there the likelihood of this actually resulting in a positive effect for competition and users at large would is likely to be low and therefore you can have a presumptive theory of harm there we don't have that kind of knowledge with respect to how these markets work we're still trying to figure this out and there are tweaks and changes and technologies that change uh, which continue to uh, you know challenge us and our knowledge on how to apply this i mean the reason why competition law is a great tool or it, it's come up uh, as the, the foremost tool to regulate all of this is because it is indeed flexible yeah there are sort of principles out there there isn't you know it's not really about applying the a b c's to the law it's about you know figuring out whether or not this is actually harming competition how are users being harmed how is your competition being harmed is there foreclosure in the market and um so that flexibility is great but then let's not apply it in a way that could change the market and naturally so i mean look at and then on the tipping which i feel like if it the market's really had tipped then every single product that a dominant enterprise would put out there would naturally be a success yeah and i don't think the evidence points to that i won't name you know certain things but in that case i think we wouldn't have a lot i mean today if you ask you know the the tech savvy generation i mean they're constantly using things that even i sometimes have not heard of right so i think they're very conscious of what is out there what is it that they want and they will go for it regardless of whether those options are easily available to them or not and the the second thing apart so technical knowledge is is one round long answer to to the first point and the second is empirical testing start with a small group and understand that it's not possible to cover the whole country necessarily but let's have an authentic study done let's put those questions out there you know let's ask let's test whether or not this is actually benefiting or harming your users what is important for from a user perspective what is important from an industry perspective whether you whether there is actual foreclosure in the market or there is and whether they actually have Have tools that will there are entry barriers at all or not, and then let's test the evidence. Even if someone is saying yes, there are or no, there aren't. Let's test that out. Let's ask the right questions to get to the right answers. Right. I think broadly, what I'm getting is that you're saying that we should be careful whenever we are planning an intervention, and if an intervention has to be made under antitrust, then it should be based on existing technical knowledge as well as collection of. cogent empirical data at least with limited sets to start off with so that we know that our decisions that are being uh, that are coming from competition authorities don't end up setting us back instead of pushing us forward so i think as a broad summary that's my main take away from this discussion that's an absolutely fair summary i mean the risk of false positives is something that i don't think we can um risk in this environment where we're on the edge of you know um, significant growth especially in the digital economy right right thank you so much for again taking time out for this and i hope to keep engaging 
uh, with you on on issues related to competition and other aspects of the law. Mm-hmm.